Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth. Continuing through Judges 10 through 12 today. Now we got done seeing Gideon and some of that story, and then we followed his son, um, Abimelech, and that didn't turn out so well with either Abimelech or his brothers. So we talked about that again yesterday. Today we're gonna continue the story looking at more judges, uh, more Israelite oppression, um, just a lot of bad decisions. Um, and then we'll also look at Jephthah. And that is, uh, I want to say, Gideon's son. Um, Gilead's. I'm sorry, Gilead's son. So we'll see a little bit of his story as well. Um, and also his conflict with Ephraim. Again, all of that is going to be in chapters 10 through 12. So let's get into it. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shemir in the mountains of Ephraim. He judged Israel twenty-three years, and he died and was buried in Shemir. After him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and he judged Israel twenty-two years. Now he had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkeys, and they had thirty towns, which are called Havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Camon. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, and the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. From that year they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for eighteen years, all the children of Israel who were on the side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorites in Gilead. Moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah also, against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. So the Lord said to the children of Israel, did I not deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the people of Ammon and from the Philistines? Also, the Sidonians, the Amalekites, the Maonites oppressed you, and you cried out to me, and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. Go and cry to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in, their in your time of distress. And the children of Israel said to the Lord, we have sinned. Do whatever seems best to you, only deliver us this day, we pray. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. Then the people of Ammon gathered together and camped, encamped at Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled together and encamped at Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, who is the man will begin the fight against the people of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Chapter 11. Now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor, but he was the son of a harlot, and Gilead begot Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore sons, and when the wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall have no inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land, in the land of Tob, and worthless men banded together with Jephthah and went out raiding with him. It came to pass, after a time, that the people of Ammon made war against Israel. And so it was, when the people of Ammon made war against Israel, that the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. They said to Jephthah, Come and be our commander, that we may fight against the people of Ammon. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Do you not hate me and expel me from my father's house? Why have you come now when you are in distress? And the leaders of Gilead said to Jephthah, That is why we have turned again to you now, that you may go with us and fight against and fight against the people of Ammon, and be our head over all our inhabitants of Gilead. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you take me back home to fight against the people of Ammon, and the Lord delivers them to me, shall I be your head? And the leaders, the elders of Gilead, said to Jephthah, The Lord will be a witness between us, if we do not do according to your words. Then Jephthah went to the heads, to the elders of Gilead, and to the people made him head and commander over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. Now Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon, saying, What do you have against me, that you have come to fight against me in my land? And the king of the people of Ammon answered, The messengers of Jephthah, because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt, from the Arnon as far back as to the Jabbok and to the Jordan. 
Now, therefore, restore these lands peaceably. So Jephthah again sent messengers to the king and to the people of Ammon and said to them, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of Moab, nor the land of the people of Ammon. For when Israel came up out of Egypt, they walked through the wilderness as far as the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not heed. In, in like manner, they sent to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained in Kadesh. And they went along through the wilderness and bypassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab and came to the east side of the land of Moab and encamped on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not enter the border of Moab, for the Arnon was, their, was the border of Moab. Then Israel sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon. And Israel said to him, Please let us pass through your land into our place. But Sihon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Sihon gathered all his people together and camped in Jahaz and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hands of Israel, and they defeated them. Thus Israel gained possession of all the lands of the Amorites who inhabited that country. They took possession of all the territory of the Amorites, from the Arnon to the Jabbok, and from the wilderness to the Jordan. And now the Lord God of Israel has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. Should you then possess it? Will you not possess whatever Chemosh your God gives you to possess? So whatever the Lord our God takes possession of before us, we will possess. And now, are you any better than Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel? Did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon and its villages, in Eroer and its villages, and in all the cities along the banks of the Arnon for three hundred years, why did you not recover them within that time? Therefore, I have not sinned against you, but you wronged me in fighting against me. May the Lord the Judge render judgment this day between the people, between the children of Israel and the people of Ammon. However, the king of the people of Ammon did not heed the words which Jephthah sent him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and passed through Mizpah of Gilead, and towards and from Mizpah of Gilead he advanced towards the people of Ammon. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. So Jephthah advanced towards the people of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands, and he defeated them from Erawer as far as Mineth, twenty cities, and to Abel Karamim with a great slaughter. Thus the people of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. When Jephthah came to his house at Mizpah, there was his daughter coming out to meet him with timbrels and dancing, and she was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. And when it came to pass, when he saw her, saw her, that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You are among those who trouble me, for I have given my word to the Lord, and I cannot go back on it. So she said to him, My father, if you have given your word to the Lord, do to me according to what was done out of your mouth, because the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the people of Ammon. Then she said to her father, let this thing be done for me. Let me alone for two months that I may go and wander on the mountains and bewail my virgin virginity, my friends and I. So he said, go. And he sent her away for two months and she went away with her friends and bewailed her virginity on the mountains. And it was so that at the end of the two months that she returned to her father and he carried out his vow with her, which he had vowed. She knew no man. And it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went for four day, went four days each year to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. Chapter 12. Then the men of Ephraim gathered together, crossed over toward Zephon, and said to Jephthah, Why did you cross over to fight against the people of Ammon, and why did you not call us to go with you? We will burn your house down on you with fire. And Jephthah said to them, My people and I were in a great struggle with the people of Ammon, and when I called you, you did not deliver me out of their hands. So, when I saw you would not deliver me, I took my life into my hands, and I crossed over the people of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them upon my hand. Why have then you come up to me this day to fight me? Now Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought against Ephraim, and the men of Gilead defeated Ephraim, because they had said, You Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites, and among the Manassites, and the Gileadites seized the fjords of the Jordan before the Ephraimites arrived. 
And when any Ephraimite who escaped said, Let me cross over, the men would say to him, Are you an Ephraimite? If he said no, they would say to him, Then say, Shiboleth. And they would pronounce, and he would pronounce it Sibboleth, for he could not pronounce it right. Then they would take him and kill him there at the fjords of the Jordan. There fell at that time 42,000 Ephraimites. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. And Jephthah, the Gileadite, died and was buried among the cities of Gilead. After him, Ibzon of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons and he gave away 30 daughters in marriage and brought in 30 daughters from elsewhere for his sons. He judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzon died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, Elon, the Zebulonite, judged Israel. He judged Israel ten years, and Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried at Aijalon in the country of Zebulun. After him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirthenite, judged Israel. He had forty sons and thirty grandsons who rode on seventy young donkeys. He judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pith. Pirithonite died and was buried in Pirithon, in the lands of Ephraim, in the mountains of the Amalekites. So a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff as, uh, as Judges just keeps throwing at us. I think what stood out to me was actually what we read yesterday. And I think I mentioned a little bit about this, but it was in Judges 8.23 when they are asking Gideon to, um, to lead them. And uh, when the Israelites are asking that of him. And I, I just keep coming back to that because, because it seems like that for all the Israelites' lack of following God, that is where all of this terribleness comes from. And again, I think I mentioned some of this yesterday, but we just continue to see that. And on a very micro scale, I very much see that in my own life when I don't rely on God and when I don't quickly repent when I don't immediately turn around. Anytime I am self-serving or uh, willfully sinful, any of that, that quickly spirals out of control and it never ends well. Whereas if God is my center and if I'm rooted well and, and mindful and prayerful, um, it may not always go like I plan or like I initially want, but it always goes better. Um, so I just thought that was interesting. I know Israel is very much the microcausal example for um, our lives today, but it is interesting that we just continue to see that, and very much so in Judges. But that's all I had for today. As always, thank you so much for joining. Have a great rest of your day.